Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. It's very important to make sure that your Active Directory sites and services are configured properly. This is because Exchange 2010 uses Active Directory sites to determine email routing. So if the sites aren't configured properly and the subnets aren't configured properly, then email writing, routing may either be inefficient or you may have problems. So I'm on a domain controller. I'm going to go to the Start menu, click on Administrative Tools, and open up our Active Directory Sites and Services. And you can see I just have one site here, Phoenix. If you have multiple sites, it can become more critical that your sites and services are configured properly. Now even if you just have one site it's important to make sure that it's configured right. The most important thing we want to configure is going to be our subnets. You can see I have one subnet that I configured 192.168.6.0 and that subnet is in my Phoenix site. I can see that by just right clicking on it going to properties and I can see the site it's in is Phoenix. And the reason it's important to configure your subnets is because that's what determines not only what domain controller a computer in that subnet talks to, but where a computer or server is at. What site is it in? You can see if I expand out my site here, under servers, we only have domain controllers listed. So all of the servers and desktops, we determine what site they're in, or Active Directory determines it, by the subnet that it's in. So if we have multiple sites, let's say Phoenix, and we have another site, let's say named San Diego, how do we know what site that Exchange server is in? Well, if we haven't configured our subnets properly, then they're all probably configured in the same site, and they might not be in the same site. And that can cause inefficient email routing. So let's add a subnet. For example, let's say in my Phoenix site, I also have the subnet 192.168.7. I'm just going to right click on my subnets, go to new subnet, and you can see I can add an IP version 4 subnet or an IP version 6 subnet. I'm going to type in 192.168.7.0/24. So now anything that starts any IP address that starts with 192.168.7 is going to be in my Phoenix site. So I'll just highlight my Phoenix site and click OK. Now let's go ahead and just create another site, just so we can see what it looks like. I'm going to right click on my sites, go to new site, and you would only want to do this if you actually had another site and other domain controllers were in that other site. I'm going to call this one San Diego. And we have to specify what site link we're going to use, and we'll talk about that in a second. I'm just going to click on the default IP site link. Let's me know site San Diego has been created to finish configuration and ensure that San Diego is linked to other sites or with other site links as appropriate. Add subnets, install one or more domain controllers in San Diego, or move existing DCs to the site. So we've got San Diego. I'll just expand it out. You can see we don't have any servers in here, and these are our domain controllers. Let's say DC02 was actually in San Diego. Well, then I would just right click on it, click on move, and then move it down to my San Diego site. And if I had a different IP address subnet range that was in San Diego, I would just add it up here. Right click on it, go to new subnet. Let's say 192.168.5.0 slash 24 is going to be in San Diego. Go ahead and click OK. And now that subnet is in San Diego. So now if we create a server, let's say an exchange server, that's in the 192.168.5 subnet, then Exchange knows how to route messages because it knows that server's in San Diego. Another thing we may need to configure is our site links. If we have a lot of sites, we may have multiple ways for emails to be routed. And we may have some links between sites that are very slow and some that are very fast. Well, we can configure the site links. If I go to Intersite Transports, click on our IP, you can see we have our default IP site link. If I right click on it, go to Properties, 
we have a cost and a replicate every the default is going to be 180 minutes and we can also change the schedule of when replication can occur now replication is going to be a critical to exchange because you can create a new mailbox for a user but that mailbox won't be available until Active Directory gets replicated to a domain controller that the user is using. And also the cost is going to be important if you have a lot of sites. The cost basically means is this a slow link or is this a fast link. Normally if you just have a couple of sites leaving it at the default is fine. But If you do have even three sites and all the sites are interconnected but let's say one site has a very slow link to another site well we may want to configure the cost so that Active Directory sites and services knows okay if we send messages over this particular link it might take a little bit longer so it might be best to send the message over another link but regardless if it has a direct connection between hub transport servers it's going to serve it that, send it that way and one thing to note that if you do make changes to your sites and services you know it's not only going to affect how your email messages are routed but how Active Directory replication happens for example let's say Active Directory sites and service wasn't configured we did in fact have two different sites but we didn't configure it and replication was actually happening fairly fast well that's because Active Directory thought that all the domain controllers were in the same site and now all of a sudden we move another domain controller over to San Diego well as we saw in our site link now all of a sudden the domain controllers are only going to replicate every 180 minutes that's three hours so that's a big difference from what we had before so you want to be careful you know when you're making changes to Active Directory sites and service services but it does need to be configured properly in order for email messages to be routed efficiently and properly.